I want to be saved. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. My friend, I beg you this morning, do it today. Make today the day of your salvation. In fact, we're going to bow our heads right now. Lord, I don't know the heart of uh, everybody here, but uh, you do. And what's really, really important right now is that people do business with you. And so, Lord, I, I pray this morning that if there's anyone here today that does not know you as Lord and Savior, anyone here today that's never prayed that prayer of salvation, that, Lord, they would do that today, that this would be their day of salvation, that they would say to you, yes, Lord, I am a sinner, and I confess my sins to you, and I believe that you died on a cross for my sins, and that your precious blood was shed on a cross 2,000 years ago for my ugliness, my dirtiness, and all of my sin. And I want today to, for you to open my heart and to come in. My friend, that can happen just as surely as you pray that prayer and you mean it in your heart this day if the Lord's speaking to your heart. And no better time than now to settle that issue of eternity with our Lord Jesus Christ because he died for you that you might have that ever abundant life. If you're here this morning and you prayed that prayer and you meant what you said in that prayer and you prayed it for the very first time, would you just raise your hand? Just lift your hand up. Just lift your hand up. Okay? Did you do business with God this morning? Did he speak to your heart? And for the very first time, you indicated to him, yes, Lord, I know I'm a sinner, and this is the day I want to be saved. Would you raise your hand? Amen. We thank you, Lord, for your work in our lives. And we know, Lord, that you save us for a purpose, and that purpose is that we glorify you. And I want to thank you for working in the lives of people even this day. Amen. Let's look at the rest of the verse, the rest, the rest of this chapter, because, see, the rest of the story is important, too. And, and, and what happened? And, and so the jailer that very night was born again, and he washed their wounds because, you see, beating them with these rods put blood all over their back. And so he, he washed their wounds, and he brought them to a point that night where they were cleansed of their, he, of their pain that they were suffering because of those. And immediately, it says, he was baptized. He wanted to give his testimony of what God had done in his life. And not only him, but his whole household. You know, the man wanted to go and tell everybody in his house what he had done. It's a possibility that when he was there on his knees before them, that those upstairs because probably the house of the jailer was upstairs, had come down, and they were listening as Paul was saying to them, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you can be saved. It's a possibility that they heard at that moment. Or Paul told them also how to be saved, but they were also saved. And what? They were baptized as a testimony. And then it said he brought them into his house. One translation, it says he brought them up into his house, which indicates he lived on the second floor. And he set food before them. And he rejoiced greatly, having believed in God in his, in his whole household. Indication of transformation in that man's life. There was repentance. There was transformation. God had changed his heart. That's what happens when we trust in Jesus and he comes in. He brings a transformed life into our life. He gives us the Holy Spirit. And that enables us to live that transformed life. That's what happened. What a beautiful story. What a beautiful story from God's Word. Lord, we thank you for your Word. We thank you for the truth of your Word. And I do pray that if there's anyone here that's never prayed the prayer of salvation, that today would be the day when they place their faith and their trust in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll do our... Uh